We've spent a lot of time talking about paying Brian Burns, but is it actually time to pay Derek Brown? We'll talk about it on this weekly Wednesday mailbag edition of Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free over on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me. Julian Council on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Wednesdays, like today, in the next three weeks, as the regular season will conclude very soon for the Carolina Panthers, I'll be right here answering your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions. Once we get to the offseason in January, every Friday will be the weekly Friday mailbag for the folks who have not tuned in during the offseason here on Locked on Panthers, either at me. Or you can DM me over on Twitter at Julian Council to get your questions in for next week's edition of the Weekly Wednesday Mailbag right here on Locked On Panthers. Today's episode of Locked On Panthers is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. All right, we are back once again here on a Wednesday talking about the Carolina Panthers. Panthers, who they're sorry. We know that one in 12, not great, not ideal, looking like a one in 16 football team. Fingers crossed they don't make history, but the hope is maybe they can find a way to ruin, I don't know, the Atlanta Falcons season starting on Sunday afternoon at Bank of America Stadium. And it'd be nice if they could go out there and also maybe beat Tampa, ruin their season later on here in 2023. That, that's what we're really playing for the rest of the way, trying to ruin your division rival season. They didn't do that against New Orleans. Got blown out somehow. Don't know how in the world that's even possible. Run for 204 yards, only allowed 207 yards, and lose by 22 points. But they did it. They found a way. And uh, doggone it, you got to be proud of them for doing it. Not really. But uh, let's get into the weekly Wednesday mailbag here on Locked on Panthers. And I guess we're going to do this uh, for a second because I was thinking to myself when reading this next question, you know what? I'm probably guilty of this too. And I'm going to be honest. I'm going to own up to it right here. Starting off with Andre, who says, not to rehash this conversation, but I need it for my sanity. Oh boy, Andre. Do you believe, do you truly believe rather, CJ Stroud would have made this team any better? Sure. I can surmise he may not have had the interceptions Bryce Young has had, but I am tired of people that didn't want Bryce ignoring the clear bleep show around him and magnifying every single Bryce era error to push their agenda just to crap on Bryce. It seems every respected NFL analyst understands while CJ has been outstanding, Bryce has been let down by this franchise, and it's okay to admit that. Folks gave more grace to Sam Darnold, Kyle Allen, and Baker Mayfield when Bryce had a better college career than any of them. Whoo, a couple things there. Andre, I, I hope you feel better uh, getting that off your chest and um, us talking about it on the show. Please DM me uh, afterwards. Let me know how you feel about my response here. Number one, welcome to Twitter. That's how Twitter works, man. People just let the takes fly. It is a disgusting place, but it's a place that we all know and love. And I, I haven't been in the muck as much as I used to. Like At this point in time, the only time you guys are really seeing me tweet is me tweeting out links to me come on the show live because hell I don't get paid to tweet I get paid to do this podcast and why would I give my opinions out for free on Twitter so and a lot of times too I just don't have time to mess with y'all I just sometimes don't care what you have to say and typically the people that DM me they DM me coming correct the people that just want to at me they're just a bunch of a-holes. I just don't have time for that, especially when I'm not making any money putting out my opinions out there on Twitter for free uh, but number two I'd argue, actually, that Baker Mayfield had a better college career than Bryce Young. He played longer than Bryce Young, was a starter from the get-go as a true freshman walk-on at Texas Tech. I still don't pe under think people understand just how remarkable the Baker Mayfield story was there in college. Balled out at, at uh, Texas Tech, Cliff Kingsbury, 
He's like, I want Davis Webb instead. He goes to OU, walks on there, gets into the playoff in his first year, and then he wins Eisen trophies last year, has that epic Rose Bowl, goes number one overall. Baker Mayfield had an outstanding career. I'd actually say he had a better career than Bryce Young, even though I love Bryce Young the last two years at Alabama. But number three, here's like the real point. And this is just what it is, Andre. People who wanted Bryce Young are more likely to be patient. That's you. That's me. Even though on the record draft day, I said the Carolina Panthers, if they have this all-star coaching staff and they're meant to develop a quarterback, maybe take the guy with the most physical talent, and that was Anthony Richardson. But I liked Bryce Young. I was cool with it. I would have been cool with C.J. Stroud. I guess the one guy I probably wasn't going to really be all that cool with, even though I lied to y'all and said I would have been, is Will Levis. And you know what? He aight. So... Maybe that would have worked out, but just people who wanted Bryce, they're going to be patient with it. They're going to still believe in Bryce Young. But the people who didn't want Bryce Young, um, they're going to be all the way the hell out after watching him this season. They're not going to be willing to come up with the same excuses they maybe made in the past. We heard it a lot with Sam Darnold. Well, you give him a, a good offensive line, maybe he'll have success. McCaffrey didn't get hurt. Maybe he'd have success. Maybe the man just can't play. That's my thoughts on the situation and what has borne out so far in his six years in the NFL. Ain't playing right now, sitting down there in San Francisco. But those are the facts, man. People who wanted Bryce are going to be patient. People didn't want to didn't want Bryce. They're all the way out. That's just how this thing works. Bryce Young was a polarizing player from the get go. Once the Carolina Panthers traded up to number one on March 10th, we had the conversation right then and there. And who did people want right off the bat? For the most part, the ones at least who were active. On Twitter, in the early reports of NFL people were, the Carolina Panthers moved up to get C.J. Stroud. But you listen to David Tepper a couple weeks ago when he fired Frank Reich. He talked about originally, we were going to move up to number two because we thought the Texans were going, or not the Texans, or whoever, I guess, move up to three maybe. That's what they're going to do. Either way, they were going to move up not to the number one spot, but the spot behind whoever was going to take a quarterback because they thought whatever team did, they were going to take. Bryce Young. That was what they were planning on doing, but they fell in love with Bryce. That's who they wanted. They went up and got Bryce Young number one overall. And we had the conversations ad nauseum throughout the entirety of the draft process about Bryce Young's height, whether he can hold up. And so far, he's holding up. And yes, we've all seen how CJ Stroud has played much better. Clearly, the situation in Houston's better. Uh, clearly, CJ Stroud at this point in time is just better. You can be honest that CJ may just be a better player than Bryce Young. Will he end up being a better player than Bryce Young? I don't know. Still time to figure it out. But you go back to some of the other guys. Like Sam Darnold is an example, and this is me being honest right now. If you listen to the show way back then, actually, I think the first show I ever did was talk about why it did not make any sense at all for the Carolina Panthers to go trade for Sam Darnold. Why? Because he's terrible. And what did the Carolina Panthers do? They gave up a second, fourth, and the sixth round pick for that guy. And on to boot, they went out there and gave the man his fifth-year option worth $18.9 million. I was sick. I understood it in a way because if you're going to give up three draft picks, looking really at the second-round pick, you might as well give the guy's fifth-year option and try and see in two years' time whether he would be the answer. But you had three years to see that he clearly wasn't a good quarterback. They brought him here. I told y'all, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to give Sam Darnold a chance. And I gave him a chance. That game against Houston in the second half, McCaffrey went out on a Thursday night game. I thought he played well. I went out here and I gave Sam Darnold his props, but then they lost four straight games and he got benched against New York giants. They were three and four. And after seven weeks of the season, I was all the way the hell out. Cause I was really never all that in, in the first place. I was out from the beginning, but I gave it a chance. And when it didn't work out, I was out because that's just how it works out. So there's probably people out there who are like me who really weren't in on Bryce Young. And then once they saw things with the, with the season and they can maybe identify that, yes, the offensive line, like in 2021, hasn't been great, that the receivers, well, they, they weren't really that bad in 21, but they weren't they weren't great. Uh, that's still not been as good around the quarterback. But still, whether you believe in them or not, like that's really what it bases on. Did you believe in them? If so, you're probably going to still believe in them. If you didn't, well, you're not going to be in on him. Baker Mayfield, he's someone who I actually believed in. But for Baker, it took less time for me to be out on him. I went back to look at it. It was after the Arizona game last year where the offense was putrid. They were 1-3. I was a guy saying, hey, it's got to take some time to get there. Well, it was never going to get there, clearly, with Baker Mayfield, and we saw he was the worst quarterback that started for the Carolina Panthers last year. That's the guy I believed in, still believe in to this day, 
And I was out after a couple of weeks because really for Baker, it was to prove whether he was the guy long term. And that is not the case. So in short, and I've said it again, Andre, if people were in on Bryce, they're going to be patient. If they weren't in on Bryce, well, they're going to use every single time he makes a mistake to dunk on him because that's Twitter. That's sports fandom, and that's this 24-7 news cycle where we get guys like David Carr going on NFL Network and saying that the Eagles will be better with Marcus Mariota because everyone's got to have a take. I got to come up here and say something. I have an opinion every day. Uh, it makes it difficult to be patient, especially in the way of the media cycle nowadays and everyone having a platform on social media. That's just the world. I would encourage you to just maybe take a step back and try to get away from it. All right, let's take a quick pause here. Then I'll come back and answer more of your weekly mailbag questions here on Locked on Panthers. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So I'm imploring you, please. At least for whatever you do, do not bet on the Carolina Panthers. I am trying to get you some money. Bet on whoever's playing the Detroit Pistons because apparently they lose every single time they play. Bet on the team that's playing the Pistons. There you go. I just won you $150. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than right now. The NFL's going on right now. And since the tournament's over, congratulations to the Lakers, but the NBA's still here. College basketball, the college bowl season, sickos only. Let's go. Get in on the action right now. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more so. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season, which we kicked off 14 weeks ago. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Let that be the last time we have the conversation this season about whether the Panthers would have been better with CJ Stroud or not. And I don't even think I answered the question. I basically just wanted to tell Andre that, yeah, man, that's Twitter. That's just, that's what it is. That's how people are. Would they be better? No, the, the roster sucks. So. I, I don't think they'd be much better. Maybe they'd be a little bit better, but they wouldn't be as much better as people will think. Hope. I don't know. Moving on. Jake, he says something about the NFC South. I know it's tough to think positive at the moment. It might be tough for you, Jake. I'm, I'm a positive thinking guy, right? Someone's laughing right now. How dare you laugh at me? And people might struggle to see it this way. But is the lack of quality in the division a positive for the Panthers? No team in the division has a winning record, and there isn't a quarterback that will own the division for the next 10 years. I know this relies on Tepper and the organization actually making the right decisions. Mm -hmm. But this isn't the AFC North or East where there are multiple playoff teams for the next 10 years. Well, nothing's guaranteed. Jake, there's nothing guaranteed that, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers are guaranteed to never have a losing season, but they're not guaranteed to go to the playoffs every year, as we saw last year, as they went nine and eight and still didn't make the playoffs. And the Browns, well, we know nothing's ever guaranteed with them. And I know the Bengals have Joe Burrow. He's out right now, but they're still the Bengals. The Ravens feel pretty confident in what they're going to be able to do. Um, but I understand your point. The NFC South sucks. <laughs> Let's just be honest. The Saints are no good. The Bucks are no good. The Falcons are no good. And we all know about how bad the Carolina Panthers are. At this point in time in the season, point differential is a real good indicator of whether you're a good football team or not. You look at the point differential in the NFC South. You got three teams tied at six and seven. The Buccaneers have a minus eight point differential. The Falcons are minus 18. The Saints are plus 24. And yeah, the Carolina Panthers are minus 144. So that's not really all that important. But looking at the other teams in the division, the only team that is, I guess, if you want to even count them as decent, would be New Orleans because they have a positive point differential. But Tampa and Atlanta sitting there at six and seven with them, they're not good football teams. Not at all. And there's questions about whether Desmond Ritter is a long-term guy in Atlanta. We saw briefly he was benched for our old friend Taylor Heineke. Then he went back out there, took over the job, got them back in position to be atop the division, and then they blew the game on Sunday at home in your face, Falcons, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, the Buccaneers, I don't know if Kyle Trask is somebody they really believe in. 
if they don't get to the playoffs this year, maybe Todd Bowles is out. That looks like a roster that's certainly in flux with some aging veterans there, especially on uh, both sides of the ball. But Mike Evans, what's his future going to look like? Could he be a Carolina Panther? I don't know. Um, but Baker Mayfield, our old buddy, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I'm concerned about Baker Mayfield if he's there in Tampa Bay for the long term. And then in New Orleans, uh, yeah, Derek Carr, he's not it. And that also could be um, a coach who gets fired and Dennis Allen. So, yeah, the situation in NFC South is still very much in flux, which is a positive for the Carolina Panthers. But also, on the other hand, that's probably what makes a lot of people frustrated as well on top of just gestures at this nonsense. Um, the division's open, wide open. You don't have to win, have a winning record to be within the division race. If the Panthers... I guess maybe start Andy Dalton because we're looking at it. Probably Andy Dalton gave him the best chance to win this season. But the most important thing this season was clearly developing Bryce Young. You look at the record, you look at how Bryce has played, and you look that Frank Reich's been fired because of the lack of development, and that is clear as day. If the Carolina Panthers truly wanted to be a playoff team this year, or at least contend for the division because I didn't think they were going to be a playoff team regardless, they would have started Andy Dalton throughout the entirety of the season. But what they were focused on was getting the most out of their asset and Bryce Young and, well, they have not gotten the most out of him. But the Panthers had just won, I don't know, like five games. They would be in it here in the middle of December. Instead, they didn't. So while that is a positive to look ahead, it's still, in a way, kind of a negative of, damn, you're so bad that you can't even be competitive in this crap of a division. I think some fans have to think that way, too. Uh, but it does give them an opportunity. There's no Patrick Mahomes in this division. You don't have to worry about Lamar Jackson. Uh, you look just in the NFC. They're not sitting in the NFC East where they got to deal with Dak and they got to deal with Jalen Hurts. There's still a lot of questions at the quarterback position and even the head coach position throughout the division. And those questions include here in Carolina. So for me, when I look at that rule, by last year, year three, that should have been the position for the Carolina Panthers to take over the NFC South. And they didn't do it. They got another mulligan. And they didn't do it this year. So the they keep getting mulligans. Eventually, man, you're just going to have to count that stroke as OB and move on. So we'll see if the Carolina Panthers can figure the hell out this offseason. I'm just not all that confident. Now, speaking of the offseason, Nick, he says, looking ahead to the offseason, are there three or four things that you'd like to see happen to make it a successful offseason? Don't think we're going to go worse the first, but what move, staff or roster, would constitute competency of the franchise? I got five things for you, Nick, and I don't know if you're going to love the answer necessarily. Number one, if you get rid of your GM, hire the right general manager. Number two, hire the right head coach. Number three, retain key free agents and sign free agents who can help the team. Number four, draft well and number five and most importantly david tepper get the hell out of the way like those are the five things i want to see this off season and you look back at last off season the process the carolina panthers use i don't necessarily disagree with i actually liked a lot about it i did like a lot about it not actually i did like a lot about it while i wanted steve wilkes to be the head coach here in carolina and believe that he had earned it i understood the hiring of frank reich he was someone in Indianapolis who had a winning record. He had success. He had a ton of turnover at quarterback. And you could look at that as an explanation to why things didn't work out for him in the long term there in Indy. And, of course, the Ursay of it all. But Jim Ursay has been a successful owner in, this, in, in the NFL. So maybe it's not all Ursay. And they're having success so far this season there with Shane Steichen. But I understood it. Former quarterback, former play caller. He's had success at quarterbacks like Andrew Luck before and Phillip Rivers. Maybe he can develop Bryce Young. And when you bring a staff around Frank Reich with a ton of experience, a lot of it made sense. I didn't love trading with DJ Moore. I said it on that night. I don't really understand how you're going to help your quarterback who's a rookie if you don't have a receiver like DJ Moore. And the returning receivers, Terrace Marshall, wasn't super high on him. LaVishka Chenault, y'all know I don't like him at all. Um, and then you had Shai Smith. I was like, ugh, this is it. Okay, free agent market, oh, gross, not great. But they went out there and they made the necessary moves. Going out and getting DJ Chark made sense. Getting Adam Thielen, of course, made sense and has worked out. Getting Hayden Hurst made sense. Like, they did a lot of things. Like, I go back to the offseason checklist I had. Everything I wanted to do in the offseason, I like the process of it. I appreciate what they did, but the guys they brought in, the coaches that they brought in, they just didn't pan out. And when it comes to David Tepper and trying to find a new 
coach, I'm seeing people say, oh, get a search firm. That is one of the best grifts going on right now in America, that you are going to pay somebody to tell you who could be a good candidate. I, I guess there's uh, other services like that. But come on. The amount of money these search firms make is ridiculous. I don't mind. If David Tepper do, goes again with having that many people talking, like where they're, if he's going to have Fitterer back, having Fitterer in there, having Dan Morgan in there, the whole front office, Christy Coleman, the president being there. I don't even mind Nicole being there. She owns the damn team. So she should at least talk to the guys who are going to interview. Is she should be should she be making the final decision? No, she's not obviously not going to make the final decision, but I don't hate the process he used last year to go find a head coach. It just didn't work out. So that is definitely the frustrating part about a lot of what's happened. But yeah, as far as the offseason goes, if you get a new GM, hire the right GM, hire the right head coach. Get the right free agents, retain your good players, draft well, the owner, get out of the way. Those are the five things I'd like to see. And maybe it will be successful this time. Um, but only time will tell. All right, let's take another quick pause here on the show. And I'll come back and answer the remainder of your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions here on Locked On Panthers. Price picks is the most fun you'll have winning up to 25 times your money this football season. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on the projected stats, and place your entry. With basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football, basketball, from the specials league, a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, you can take LeBron James. And Travis Kelsey at a 10 and a half combo of three pointers made plus receptions. Price picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. It's that easy, y'all. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, let's uh, wrap some things up here. Answer some more questions here on this weekly Wednesday mailbag question. Now, this is what I tease, and I do apologize uh, for waiting this long. I'm told if you're going to have something be the title, you got to talk about it earlier, which I typically do. I, I just wanted to get through the whole the Andre question, the whole Bryce Young of it all. But uh, Derek Brown, this is a conversation that we're going to have really more in the offseason. But let's see, Gus. Old Gus asks, at what point do we look at Brian, look at what Brian Burns is doing right now versus what he has done regarding contract talks? Because of the way it looks, Derek Brown is getting at least $25 million a year. And right now, I think I would rather have Derek Brown and Frankie Louvu. Not sure if there is enough money to go around on that side. I don't know either. Uh, I think it's about $50 million they're going to have uh, cap-wise. We'll have to see what they decide to do with a couple of players who mm, can be really tough to let go of them and get better. But we'll see what they decide to do. As far as Derrick Brown goes, we know next year in 2024, as we sit right now on December 13th or 12th, you're watching it the night before on YouTube, Derrick Brown is slated to play on the fifth-year option in 2024, which is worth $11.665 million. Congratulations, Derrick Brown. You absolutely have earned it. Looking over at our friends at SpotTrack, the place for contracts, I've been told, he has a market value of three years, $35.3 million, an average salary of $11.7 million. And one of the comparable players is Ed Oliver, who received a four-year, $68 million contract, $17 million per year up there in Buffalo. And he's having an outstanding season also for the Buffalo Bills. Derek Brown ain't getting only $35 million. It's not going to happen. Now, he's getting more than that. Uh, what Ella, what Ed Oliver got, that right there, that is the basis. That is what you're looking for. That is the basement of what Derek Brown should be getting for the Carolina Panthers. There's a lot of things that need to be figured out before we can even truly have the contract conversation. Is Scott Bitterer going to be the general manager here? Is Samir Suleiman still going to be the cap expert here in Carolina? Is Dan Morgan still going to be here? Who's going to be the head coach? What's the defensive scheme going to look like? doesn't really matter. We've seen going from a multiple front scheme with Phil Snow. We have seen him now in a mainly a base 3-4 have success. Derek Brown can go. We're not worried about what scheme he's in. The man can play. So don't think that's all that concerning. But still, 
you got to figure those things out before you sign the players. And when we have the count, when people ask these questions, like I, I want him to be here. I think he's worth the money. I look at Brian Burns and he's probably really worth the Max Crosby money. And that was probably always the case, but just looking at the leverage that he had, the Carolina Panthers didn't have much recourse and they still don't. They're not going to get what they could have got for him. And that's the thing. You look at it now. What makes more sense? Signing Brian Burns to a 22 plus million dollar deal per year deal or trading him away for far less than what you could have got from him a year ago? Which one sounds better? Which one sounds worse to you? I mean, for me, it kind of sounds worse to let the player go for far less than what you could have got for him than to pay the player a good salary when he's proven to be a good player for you. Maybe he's not had a great season this year, but just because he had one bad season. And that, I guess that's how fans go. Because I had this, I was on Bleacher Report the other day and we were talking about the offensive line. And I know just people keep going back. A.K. Kwanu should be a guard. I know there's people out there who know football better than me that have said that he could be a really good guard. Maybe that will be the case down the road. We will see. But we literally saw the man play well last year at left tackle. He went the majority of the season without giving up a sack and a ton of pressures. And then he has a bad season this year. It's like, oh, got to move him. Brian Burns doesn't have an outstanding season, wants to get paid. Oh, not worth the money. <sighs> okay. Um, it's just, why are, you, why are y'all like that? Why do you have to be that way? Why? Why can't a guy, he just had a down year. Why can he still not be a very capable edge rusher at a young age who can help you moving forward? If you let him go, who is going to do anything to get after the quarterback? No guarantee Frankie Lou comes back. 26 year old DJ Johnson next year. Just these are just the questions, the things I just sit here and I bang my head against the wall, just wondering why are y'all like this? Oh, but Derek Brown, yes, I think he should get paid. I would like for Derek Brown to get paid. And I think that they should try to figure out that this year because the price only goes up. Brian Burns, they could have paid him, could have taken care of it a lot earlier than they did. And there have been multiple times to trade him for less value each time. And they didn't do it. So, again, they don't have a ton of leverage in this situation. But they had their chance. And they should have done it early. Same thing with Derek Brown. They need to do it early. The team wants to save money and have a team-friendly contract. And also, what is so weird? Why the hell are you guys siding with the billionaire doofus who has your team in the crapper? Why would you side with David Tepper in the front office? You don't want the players to get paid? It's not your money. It's not your salary cap, not your job to worry about that. That's always been weird as hell to me. All right, let's move on. Jake, head coaching question. Uh, will Jero Averro interview for the job at the end of the year? Will he want to consider everything? Will he want to considering everything he was privy to this season? Say he gets a job. Could he help entice Cortland Sutton to sign with Carolina and give us a new number one receiver? But yeah, Cortland Sutton is not the answer here in Carolina. I'll just say that. He's also under contract for the next two years in Denver. There is an out in his deal. Um, the Broncos, I think they could save $9 million. They let him go. Uh, but do they want to do that? Does Sean Payton want to move off at of Cortland Sutton? I don't know. Um, but yeah, Gerald Vero, considering everything he's privy to, would he want to interview for the job? I'm going to guess no. I would think he should be the head coach here. At least he should get an opportunity to interview, a serious opportunity, which I don't think he was given last year. Um, but yeah, I don't, if you were in that building, and you, after you read all that stuff, and that's only what we know, imagine what he knows. I don't think this is an attractive job for him. He's probably trying to get the hell out of here. Uh, all right, last question coming from Alex. And he said, I want Hayden Hurst and tight ends. Hayden Hurst's NFL career could and probably should be done. Uh, he has the concussions issue, and he apparently had the um, – the short-term memory loss. Uh, obviously, all Panther fans wish him the best and that he feels better soon. That being said, should we expect the Panthers to seek an upgrade at the tight end position during the offseason? Even if Hurst comes back, do they still seek an upgrade at the position? We know Thomas Trimble is under contract next year. Um, Hayden Hurst is under contract next year. And like Miles Sanders, they can let him go post-June 1st, but there is not much that they're going to be helping themselves with if they do that. Uh, Post-June 1st release, they're going to have a dead cap hit of $7.8 million. And I'm just sick of the Carolina Panthers continuing to just stack up dead cap money, especially when a team 
uh, they've been terrible. They have not been good. They haven't been in the playoffs since 2017. And every offseason, they're like, oh, we're going to build a winner. And then they don't build a winner. And then you get to the next offseason, they're restructuring after restructure. It's just stop doing that. Just eat the money, suck, because you're going to suck anyways, and then get the books clear. But Hayden Hurst, $7.8 million of dead cap in 2024. Then it'd be $2 million in 2025. They would only save $2.2 million if they release him. And then you got to find someone else to play tight end. You don't have a ton of draft picks. Are you drafting someone who's going to come and help you? Is Tommy Trimble going to really take that next step? I don't know. Doubt that he's ever going to be that kind of pass catching tight end that people hoped he would be when he came out of Notre Dame. Kind of feels like he is who he is right now. Maybe the defensive system coming in or offensive system coming in will be better. But he also came out this spring talking about how this offensive system was going to suit him better. Is it the quarterback? Is it the offensive line? So many things. Um, but yeah, Hayden Hurst, it feels like he probably would be back as long as he's healthy enough. Maybe not. If there's a new general manager, these things can change. There's just so many things that have to play out before we get to March to have any really definitive answer or educated answer on this matter. I just look at the numbers. Pre-June first release, that's $9.8 million of dead cap next year. And they save a grand total of $193,332 gets salary cap. <laughs> so basically nothing. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. Trimble's back. I know that. Thomas, I believe, is there is an out in his contract this year. Either way, he's there can't be too much money where you can't just get rid of him. Though they're, they're going to have to find some options there at tight end. I will say that. Will they upgrade? We thought Hayden Hurst would be an upgrade. Hayden Hurst to turn out to not be an upgrade. Better luck next year. All right, it's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly. That's me, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday through Friday. Again, y'all subscribe or follow the show for free over on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me. Julian Council on Twitter at Julian Council, where again on a Wednesday of next week and the next three Wednesdays, I will be back here to answer your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions either at me or DM me on Twitter at Julian Council to get your questions in starting after the Carolina Panthers game on Sunday against the Atlanta Falcons. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole as always, keep pounding. And I will talk to you on Thursday as we speak with Aaron Freeman of Locked On. Falcons for another Locked On NFL crossover Thursday edition brought to you by Price Picks.